been studying the book of First Timothy. Thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate it. And um, <coughs> we've learned that um, that Timothy was like a spiritual son to Paul. Um, I have to tell you that that is the call of all of us who are believers that we would make sons and daughters in the kingdom of God. That our commitment to God and our um, our willingness to serve the Lord is not just because of us. We just we are not called to be an island unto ourselves. We are called to bring forth the good news, the message of the good news. We're going into chapter 3 in Timothy today. First Timothy. We're going to do that. Could uh, I ask somebody to get me a bottle of water in the back? Oh, that's okay. Thank you, Mike. Michael, it's right in the refrigerator, I think. Right, Sue? The water's in the refrigerator. Thank you. Thank you very much. For a dollar. <laughs> Did you hear? For a dollar. <laughs> oh, she's so funny today. So listen, let's turn. Let's turn to uh, chapter 3. We're going to get into what the early church was all about and how uh, churches are in the scriptures set up. And uh, and this is important for us. To, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, this is so important for us. You know, I'll tell you, there's all kinds of churches out there. Um, and... And sometimes I wonder, <laughs> to be quite honest, it's like some just some just have a pastor, no accountability above the pastor, and uh, and things just happen the way the pastor wants it, and and people get hurt, and you know people get hurt even when we've got a when we've got a whole group of uh, leaders and what have you, and I imagine with just a pastor in the in the helm, it can be pretty difficult, but. The, the Lord through, through Paul sets up some of the constructs of what a biblical church is supposed to look like. Jesus established the church and he said the gates of hell would not prevail against the church. But sometimes you think that hell is prevailing. When you start hearing some of the things about pastors going wrong and, and abuses within the church and, um, and you wonder sometimes, some of us have come from churches that were quite abusive. And so it's always important for us to get an idea what it says in scripture, first of all, so that where we're, where we are at is biblical, is sound, is not dictatorial, but it's Bible based. Because where we are, when we take in the message of that place, it becomes our food. And so we have to know what we're eating. You know, sometimes uh, folks will say, oh, I'm going to hear this person or I'm going here. Um, I, I've had even pastors say, I'm going down to, to uh, uh, Florida to hear this big evangelist a few years ago, this guy. I mean, whoo, I was hearing from pastors. Oh, Pastor Vicky, the Holy Spirit's falling down there. We got to go down and bring it back. As if the Holy Spirit, you know, <laughs> was down there and not up here, you know. And, uh, oh man, people are getting slain. People are getting healed. People are, got the Holy Ghost shakes and oh man, things are happening. And as, you know, when something like that happens as a pastor, you're going, Lord, am I missing you? I want to make sure that the people at Christ Community Church are getting what they need and all that you want. Lord, what, what is this? And the Lord would bring me to places and, and I'd get online. I'd start to read about the person who was in charge of this and, and how the operation was and didn't find a bit of God in it. And so uh, about eight months after all of this was going on and people are flying in and, you know, woo and getting all excited and laughing and doing all kinds of gyrations and, and all of that, I opened up the newspaper and found out this guy had left his wife and was living with uh, uh, one of the ladies who supposedly had been freed from something, I don't know, delivered from something. Well, she was delivered right into the hands of somebody who was unscrupulous. Listen, whether you are with me until Jesus comes back, or whether the Lord sets you up in, in, a, in a place 
other than Christ Community Church. Know where you are and follow the biblical teachings of the church. I hope none of you go. I want every single one of you because I love those Christmas cards. But, but, but please take care of your heart. Jesus didn't save you to be deceived. Jesus saved you so that you would have freedom in love, joy, and the Holy Ghost, like we sang this morning. All right, we're in chapter 3 of the book of First Timothy. Paul is speaking to Timothy. It is a trustworthy statement uh, that any man... That if any man aspires to the office of overseer, it is a fine work that he desires to do. Um, an overseer, i got to get near the light, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting older by the second. An overseer, then, must be above reproach. The husband of one wife, everybody say at a time. Uh, you understand that, right? In other words, at that time, Paul was saying, listen, because polygamy was very prevalent and had gotten into the early church. And so uh, Paul was saying to to the church because it had started even in the even in the temples the, the 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 even the devout Jews at that time were taking multiple wives. And that started to creep into the Christian church, he says, he says that uh, an overseer would, would be um, above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, prudent, respectful, hospitable, and able to teach. What does temperate mean? Ah, very good. Um, verse 3, not addicted to wine or, per, or pugnaciousness, but gentle, uncontentious, free from the love of money. He must be one who um, who manages his own household well, keeping his children under control with all dignity. But if a man does not know how to manage his own house, how will he be able to take care of the church of God? And not a, a new convert, lest he become conceited and fall into the condemnation incurred by the devil. Man, this is true. Now remember... Who Paul is talking to. Timothy is a young guy. And yet, Paul says to him, um, that, uh, that, that, uh, and not a new convert. Because there's something about walking with the Lord over time. Timothy, had been a Christian a long time. He was raised in a Christian family. He had made a, 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 a public declaration for the Lord early on. He he sat at the feet of, of Paul. He understood the things of God and had been walking with the Lord a long time. That doesn't mean what they're saying here is someone who's brand new in the faith, faith, not a novice. That, you know, somebody gets saved three months ago and now they're going to pastor a church. They're not ready. They're not ready. Some of us had to wait a long, long time before the Lord allowed us to pastor. And there was good reason for that. Verse 7, And he must have a good reputation with those outside of the church, uh, so that he may not fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Deacons likewise. So that first few verses are really talking about overseers, which would be the elders, or considered the elders of a church. Now he's getting into deacons. And he says this, Likewise, uh, deacons must be then be men of, dig- of dignity, not double-tongued or addicted to much wine or food or sordid gain, but holding to the mystery of, th- of the faith with a clear conscience. And let those also be, first be tested, and let them serve as deacons if they are uh, if they are beyond reproach. Women must likewise be dignified, not malicious gossips or temperate, faithful to all things. Let the deacons be husbands of only one wife and good managers of their children and their own households. For those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a high standing and great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. And I am hoping, I am writing these things to you, hoping to come to you before long. I want to just stop there because I want to talk about the governmental structure of the New Testament church. The first thing I want to do is talk to you a little bit about what elders are. And we have uh, we have actually four in this church. We have Ray, we have Chris, we have Cheryl, and, and I'm an elder. You know? Yes, I pastor, I'm senior pastor, but I'm an elder. I'm one of those four. 
Our jobs as elders is to have an overview of what's going on, to make policy, to go to the Lord. When I had a question about the live nativity, I went to the elders and said, how does it seem to you? And I would have gone to either deacons as well, but as as we were coming in this morning, I, I, the first person I, I grabbed was Cher and, and, and Ray was here. Um, elders pr- are able to teach and and give direction spiritually. They are shepherds of the flock. They are, they need to be trustworthy. The, Paul is very interesting because when he says, "Listen, Timothy, make sure that that whoever you submit yourself to is tested." Now that's just not for elders, but it's for deacons. You know, our deacons in this church, Jim and and Bruce, uh, are with great wisdom. They both have taught, and they. Uh, but but deacons are different in their serving. Deacon means. To serve, it comes from diaconus, and it means to serve. And so, uh, so you, I don't know anybody who serves more than Bruce and Jim. I mean, they're there all the time. They help. Their motive is to, whether it means physically helping, like putting up, uh, structures or, or whatever, that's the call of the deacon, to serve. They're the ones that see things in the church before sometimes I even see things in the church. Hey, pastor, do you know so-and-so needs some help with food? Pastor, do you know we should really try to get over uh, to help uh, whatever, help this, there's this tree in somebody's yard and they can't get it down. That, that's kind of the role of the deacon. That doesn't mean that they're less spiritual uh, or than elders or anything like that. Their role is a little different because the scriptures teach that every joint is supplied. In a New Testament church, there is there is a plurality of leadership and there's no big eyes and little use now what does that mean for the congregation that means that you are vital in all of this because i'm a member of the congregation the deacons are a member of the congregation the elders are a part of the congregation we have the ministry of the gospel all of us collectively but how many know sometimes we need a little direction I know that there are times when I need direction from God. I'm, I'm dealing with something now uh, that I'm seeking the Lord on. And, and I went specifically yesterday to this conference in Manchester because there was something that I was hoping that I would hear something from the Lord. And, and you know, the Lord provided a couple of people to talk to me yesterday. It was funny. It just sort of happened. You know how that is, you know. There was an opportunity, and I was able to share my heart. And they uh, were so gracious to, to great pastors in the Lord. There, to, to come into leadership in the church, you know, some churches have this big voting thing. So you put in nominations, and then we vote. And you know what? That's fine for our country. But you don't find voting in the New Testament. The only time they ever voted was for deacons because, as a matter of fact, let's go there. Let's go to the book of Acts. And uh, I want to go to uh, Acts 6. There was a, a problem that happened in the early church. Because, because one of the problems with elders is that they don't, sometimes they get so much into the word and ethereal that they don't see the needs. And so in, in Acts chapter 6, I'm going to start right in the first verse. Here's the problem that happened in the early Testament church. Now, at this time, while the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint arose uh, um, on the part of the Hellenistic Jews against the um, against the, the native Hebrews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. And the twelve summoned the congregation of the disciples and said, It is not desirable for us to neglect the word uh, in order to serve tables, but select among you, brethren, seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and of wisdom. So we're not talking about some little waiter, not that waiting tables is bad, but we're not talking about somebody who is not spiritual. A deacon is very spiritual, but the de- but he says uh you know, select them uh and um 
of good reputation, full of the spirit and wisdom, uh, whom we may put in charge of the task. But we will devote ourselves in prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the statement found approval with the whole congregation. And they chose Stephen. Interesting, a man of faith. And Philip and lists a couple of others. So that's the only place where we find where the people said, hey, you know, let's let's bring in Joe. Let's bring in whomever, you know. But I want to tell you something, that whenever someone, I get very concerned about a title. Because whether you're talking about elders or deacons, sometimes people wear titles very poorly. Do you understand what I'm saying? So they walk around by saying, I am the elder. I'm an elder. How do you do? Elder Victoria Triano here. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Deacon Triano. Nice to meet you. See? And they wear the title before the action. One of the things I did when I came here, and um, all we, we had one deacon here before I came here. There were no elders. And uh, some of you know Oliver. Oliver was the only deacon and the only person. And he really wasn't a teacher. Oliver was a very faithful servant. But I knew that we needed to have the structure that was that was in the scriptures. And so I just waited. Because the Lord will show us who, who is, who is being called to that position. And so, um, I began to notice that there were certain qualities in certain people. And they be, because why? Because they walked in their gifting. There are some people in this room that are encouragers. They're like the Barnabas spirit, you know. Always saying, hey, you look great. How are you doing? I was thinking about you today. I love those glasses on you. Hey, how's it going, Michael? See, those encouragers, I wish I wish we had a billion more. Isn't that true? You just feel good when you're around them. You know what I'm saying? So that 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 rises up in people. There are people who function as encouragers. People uh, rise up who are uh, who are gifted in a certain way. Sometimes they don't even, and most of the time they don't even realize it. There are folks that flow in the prophetic and are ever and never wear the, the title prophet. But the Lord has promised that within the body of Christ, everything will be supplied. And so, as a leader, as as the pastor here. I sit back and I watch and I see people. And you know, there are so many of you who have uh, such a giving heart. I mean, uh, could anybody deny about Patty that Patty is quite the giver? Would, it, would you all agree with that? Yeah. I mean, that there is no doubt. There, uh, she's embarrassed. I, that's the best part of it. To embarrass her with it. <laughs> Isn't that the best part of it? You see, a person's gifting rises to the surface, you know? And so as, as pastor, I, that was my constant prayer when I came on board. Lord, show me who, who goes where and how it all works together. Don't forget, I was a new pastor. I made a lot of mistakes early on and later on as well. I must admit, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm still making mistakes. But, you know, certain people kind of rose up but that they were more administrative in their gifting. And, and so then you see that. I saw that with Ray right off and, and Chris. And, and you know, and I, I, I started, and of course, Cheryl. Could anybody deny that she's an elder? Do you understand what I'm saying? People will call Cheryl way before they call me. <laughs> I said, Cheryl, because they don't think I love them like you love them. But... But I began to see that. And Cher, by the way, I had to fight with for her to take the, t- the take the title. Because Cher's background was that women did not fulfill that title. So we began to watch and, and people began to rise up and began to see things and, and, and brought them in. I want to tell you that because in this place right now, other than the, uh, the other, I think Jim is the only one here. Uh, everybody else is working downstairs. Aren't you? Don't you appreciate him? Um, uh, or homesick. Um, that in our midst right now, there are deacons and elders sitting here right now. I know that. And there's going to come a time when the Lord says, bring them in. Be watchful, people. I, that's, if there's anything I could tell you, 
is to be watchful. Now, I want to tell you that there is not one deacon or one elder in this church without issues. I'm the only one. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> you know, what's that? Well, you know, <laughs> it's good to have you home, Jimmy. <laughs> You know, sometimes there's an expectation that that your pastor or the elders or the deacons or whatever that they be uh, the Paul says, let choose people above reproach. But I have to tell you that we're people and there's sometimes, you know, uh that we we say things and then we get a check in our spirit afterwards. And if we don't get a check in our spirit, somebody's quick to tell you <laughs> in case you miss the Holy Spirit that what you said was wrong or hurtful or whatever. So we're not perfect. And not all of us have perfect homes. Not all of us have perfect lives. There, you know, uh, Ben walks with us in, in leadership and... Um, uh, I, I would tell you that um, that I, I see Ben very much in the scriptures, a leader in every way. But you know, sometimes in our own lives, we feel like we have to, we can't walk into that title until things get right in certain areas, and I respect that. So you always look at the heart of a person, understanding our different personalities. Guess what? That's what that's what I do with all of you too. There are sometimes when you say something, and I go. You know, like the dog, you know, on the, on the, on the Purina, uh, 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 Purina? What is the name of the dog food? What's the name of the dog? Purina, Purina. There's a commercial, the dog goes. Sometimes somebody will say something, I'll go, really? Wow. You know? But I also understand that we're all people and that we're all walking together towards God. <sighs> I want you to know also that we as a congregation have responsibilities in this church. We have, we have the duty and responsibility to do the work of the ministry. We have the duty and the responsibility to bring forth the Word of God everywhere we go. You know, we are facing, there were two pastors that were told in a, in, I think it was in Texas, that, um, that they had to submit. Did anybody read that? That they did you read that? They had to submit something. There was it. What was it for? They had to submit their sermons. Their sermons. They had to be reviewed in their churches. Against gays, against homosexuals. Listen. To say that we are not going to be persecuted for our faith would be ridiculous. It goes with the... Maybe they'll learn something, right? Right, right. But you know, what I'm saying though, Heidi, in all of this is that we have to be prepared and ready no matter what. Now, I want to tell you that you, most of you know I serve office in Southington. I'm a Republican on the town committee, uh, town council. And, um, but I want to tell you something that, uh, I'm very clear that I'm the same person if you come to a council meeting that you see here on Sunday morning. It's the same person. Because there may come a time when I can't, I can't be the same person. Right now, it's very nice that I can do both. But always, 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 it is our relationship to the Lord that takes precedent. I am not a politician when I'm away from church, the same way I'm not a politician when I'm here at church. I'm a servant of Christ. And as long as the people understand that, put me in office, that's fine. There may come a time when that won't be, won't be, we won't be able to do that. I'm not afraid of persecution because it's going to make us stronger. I think we go through our days and we don't share the gospel and we don't, we don't see, uh, we, we don't function. We have two or three different problems in this. I'm, I'm so glad I'm here to tell you what our problems are. But we go one way or the other. Either we're such Bible thumpers that people can't get past it. That we just can't get past it. Or we give it up completely and we just kind of blend in with everybody. You know? 
So we need to be cautious of all of that. We need to be ourselves saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire baptized. We need to, we need to be those individuals in the marketplace. At work. Not so we're, not you, the whole point is that we love with God's love. That we embrace those who have never been embraced. And that includes homosexuals, that includes people who are living in sin, that includes the drunkard, that includes the, the dr- drug addict, that includes the guy who's molesting people. We love them first because God so loved the world that he gave us first his son. We are never going to please God unless we love others. We sometimes can't even love each other in the church. God forgive us. Oh, this person said this. Oh, the pastor said this. Oh, this is... We got to start loving people. We got to start showing God's love for people. We got to... You know, we got to stop thinking that all we do is sit around and pray and never get up off our chair, never get up to love one another, another, never get up to bring a meal or 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 help with a with somebody's kids. You know, there is so much that we could be doing. Instead, we get entrenched and we go, "Well, I'm a Christian, so that's that's I'm I'm just here to praise the Lord. I'm just here to carry on." But God is showing us more and more and more how important it is that we rise up in our calling. That people would know that we are Christians, not because we carry around the biggest King James, you know, that we don't carry this big, huge Bible around, facing out. I'm here. Anything you want to know, just let me know. But rather that we love them. That when they're hungry, we're feeding them. Oh, I almost forgot. We're having a food collection for the month of November, starting next Sunday. Because we'll all have an extra hour to sleep Sunday. So so stop at the grocery stores on the way in and bring some food. We're going to have a big basket. We're going to bring it to the food pantry. This church needs to take care of the people in this community with food and clothes and all of those things. And we have Patty that will make sure it gets there. So, is that right, Patty? Yeah, she, she didn't know I was going to say that. Uh. But you understand how important that is? People don't care what you know till they know how much. Come on, raise your right on your forehead. Put it on your forehead. And that's true for anybody. You know, I'm so sick and tired of Christians pointing out certain sins and making, oh, this person is a fornicator, or this person is this, or this person is this. God calls us to love everybody. I've told this story before, but it it bears repeating. And please forgive me if you've heard it more than once before. (laughs) I think I have told it more than once. But I was working with a television evangelist in in uh, um, in the Ma- in Mass- uh, I was in Connecticut, but there was a television evangelist, and he was having a, a crusade in Massachusetts. And I was a probation officer at the time. I was dealing with violent sexual offenders. The guy just got out of jail. You know the story. If you didn't, I'll tell you quickly. And he came out of state to go to this. His grandmother brought him to this to this uh, revival meeting. And lo and behold, he gets saved. And he saw me there. He must have come in late because I was on the platform. I was leading worship. He came in and he saw me and he didn't, he missed my big Bible because back in those days I was carrying a Schofield, man. It was, it was, I'm telling you, I was about 20 pounds heavier, Michael, with this Bible, you know. And uh, he came up to me. I was I walked by him, and I saw him. We were leaving, and I was going, "Oh God, I don't want to see this person. I'm I'm full of you, full of you, Lord Jesus. I don't want to deal with him. Oh, I'm just gonna." So I walked by him, you know, and and I'm just praising the Lord, Hallelujah, you know. And I hear him say, "Miss Triano," and my eyes got skinny. I stopped. My eyes got really skinny, you know, and my shoulders went back like a cop. And I went, "Yes." And he said, I know why you're here. He said, I tried to get you all afternoon on the phone, but you weren't there. My my grandmother asked me to come tonight, and I did come, and I found Jesus. I know why you're here. And he put out his wrist like this for me to put cuffs on him. Obviously, he didn't see me jumping around because my bun was flapping in the breeze. My mascara was all running from praising God and crying, you know. And that big Schofield Bible, he evidently didn't see that. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said... 
He was mine before he was yours. Do you have that heart today for others? It changed my whole life when the Lord spoke that to me. It made me see that these were people, yes, they did vile and terrible things, but they were loved by Almighty God. Listen, these are not, it's just not hyperbole today. We are really starting to change the focus of this place. We need to be out there. We need to be sharing. We need to be taking care of those around us. Last year at the tag sale, uh, Michelle, there was a young woman with a family. Right, Michelle? That was last... Pregnant. pregnant. That's right. She was pregnant. Yeah, yeah. Michelle and, and Heidi were running around grabbing stuff for her. and Oh, she can use this. She can use that. That's the heart that we all need to have. We, we didn't point, I don't even know if they were married. Were they married? I don't think they were. We don't need to be pointing the finger at anybody. We need to be loving them and taking care of them. That's the question that Jesus is going to ask us. You know, did you feed people? Did you take care of people? Did you love people? Did you watch over them? Listen, you know I believe in prayer. Every morning I'm up praying for each of you and asking. Sometimes I just pick up our directory and just go through the names when I have some time and 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 pray for, for every single person here. I believe in prayer. I, I hope you all come out to intercessory prayer on Friday night. But I want to tell you that faith without works is dead and that God has something very special for each one of us to do. Now, whether you have a title or not makes no difference. I'm a member of the congregation. I'm the one that that it falls on. If there's something that should be happening here, and and I don't say this, please understand why I'm saying this. I know that if something's supposed to be happening, my life, my finances, who I am, belongs right here. So if we need to take care of something, I need to be able to be willing to put myself on the line. Whether or not I get paid, I'm here because God has placed me here. He'll take care of me. He has for the past 13 years, and he will continue to take care of me if I stay and do and be faithful to what God has called me to do. And that's the same thing for you. Wherever God has placed you. Daniel, who's going to hear the word of God if you don't bring it to your friends? You know, our teenagers, who's going to hear the word? If you're in college, who's going to hear the word? If your neighbor, you run into somebody uh, at, at Walmart, it's the word of God that comes forth. It is taking care of a person. There is a structure in place that the Lord has put into every New Testament church. And Christ Community Church functions under that. And so we do have a senior pastor who's an elder, who's also part of the congregation. When I hurt and somebody will send me a note, you have no idea what that does for me. You have no idea. It is it is such an uplifting thing. Sometimes somebody will just say, hey, pastor, you know what? I heard your sermon and, boy, it meant the world to me. Really? <laughs> Amen. Lord, thank you. You know? We have our elders who, who work in the area of, of, of studying the word, but also in terms of the broad base of where the church is headed and all of that. We have deacons who are deacons to the nth degree who are, who are serving, truly serving. We have people right in our congregation, right here, who are servers and caretakers and, 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 and every day just do so much. Don't get weary in your well doing. Continue to help, continue to serve, continue to be in scripture, continue to walk in love. Don't take up an offense. That's exactly what the enemy wants us to do, is to take up an offense and to be, and to be, uh, uh, separatists and judgmental and all of that. Don't give him place. Don't do that in your home. Don't do that in the church. Don't do that in the world. Let God use you to bless people. And you will see so much what God is, has in store for you. I pray every day that we would be the people that God has called us to be. We're going to start our small groups again in January. We're not going to do it for the holiday. But in January, we're going to start our small groups again. And I'm very excited about that because great things happen in small groups. And I hope every single person signs up for a small group as we learn together and grow together. But from that small group, if it never goes out into the world, what good is it? 
We come together on a Sunday morning. But if we don't go out and, and preach the good news, we don't tell people that Jesus loves them, that we don't allow the Lord to use us and in love share the gospel, what good is it coming together on Sunday morning? We need to be hearers and doers of the word. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Father. Lord, we we place ourselves in your hands this morning. Lord, we give ourselves to you again. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would direct our path. And Lord, that you would give us courage to share the gospel. Lord, our children will see us sharing the gospel. Our children will see us serving. We will be great examples for our kids, Lord. Father, we pray right now that Christ Community Church would be a light. Father, especially as we come into this holiday season. And Father, you know that we're not going to be doing the live nativity, but Father, that you would be a light in this darkness. And Father, that we would somehow be a part of that. Father, we thank you, we glorify your name, and we ask you, Lord, to watch over us, watch over our kids, and Father, that your name would be glorified right here in town. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen.